Hello everyone, I'm Sam Bray, fisheries biologist for Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks in Kalispell, Montana. Today I'll be talking about how video monitoring can be used to estimate adfluvial bull trout reproductive migration and spawner to red ratio in Wounded Buck Creek, Montana. Bull trout are a chart native to Western North America. Historically known as Dolly Varden, bull trout were reclassified as a separate species in 1980. Like many salmon populations, bull trout have experienced significant declines throughout their native range. Bull trout are listed as threatened under the U.S. Endangered Species Act and as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List of Threatened Species. Bull trout require pristine habitat conditions for their persistence. But the most important factor is cold water. Bull trout populations have declined due to habitat alterations, pollutions, and non-native species, but have been extirpated in the southern part of their native range, including California, due to climate-driven warming temperatures. Bull trout exhibit multiple life history forms that contribute to a single population, including adfluvial, fluvial, and resident life history types. Contributions of variable life history forms are unknown, but through fishery sampling, our study population shows predominantly adfluvial or migratory life history. Migratory bull trout remain in natal streams for one to three years before migrating to a lake or ocean, ultimately returning to their natal stream to spawn. We will be focusing on the migratory life history type in this project in Wounded Buck Creek in Northwest Montana. Wounded Buck Creek is within the Flathead watershed and drains into Flathead Lake near Kalispell, Montana. Upstream 40 miles from Flathead Lake, the South Fork of the Flathead River flows into the main stem. The South Fork flows 4.8 miles before it is impounded by Hungry Horse Dam, forming Hungry Horse Reservoir. Wounded Buck Creek flows into the west side of Hungry Horse Reservoir. Our Vaki video weir is located upstream six tenths of a mile. The Vaki video weir is a motion activated underwater video system we use to one, understand the trend in bull trout abundance by estimating the reproductive portion of the population and conducting multiple red counts to find the number of spawners per red ratio. Two, to look at general characteristics of migration patterns, including length estimates of migrating bull trout, the time of day bull trout migrate, and also the speed that bull trout migrate upstream and downstream through the Vaki video wear. And lastly, we looked at correlation in the dates of bull trout migrations with abiotic factors, including discharge and temperature measurements which were made at the study site with a hobo pressure transducer that provided continuous discharge and temperature data throughout the study period. The Vaki video weir is composed of a stainless steel camera tunnel, underwater infrared and white light LEDs, multiplexer, infrared scanners, HD camera and a high performance computer operating the Riverwatcher software. All products were manufactured by Vaki Aquaculture Systems LTD of Iceland. The Vaki River Watcher fish counter system is being used in over 300 sites all over the world in rivers, fish ladders, weirs, and fishways. The River Watcher is able to count and identify different fish species and validate fish counts with silhouette images and videos. When a fish swims between the scanner plates, the infrared beams are broken and a silhouette image and video of the fish is generated. Since data are only collected during a passage, we do not have to watch hours of video to locate fish passages and collect data. The fish size is estimated with a bull trout specific length of body depth relationship formed from over 200 bull trout observations. The 24 volt remote system is powered by two 200 watt 12 volt monocrystalline solar panels that charge two 12 volt 200 amp hour deep cycle gel batteries produced by Renogy Technologies LTD. Although we are close to a forest service road, given the weight and fragility of the system, we use the help of the FWP aircraft team 
to sling load the system in and out of the study site. Once the swim chamber was rebarred into the creek bottom, we built an upstream and downstream weir system out of chicken wire to ensure all fish pass through the system. We continuously operated the system from July 7th to October 14th, 2021, and we checked and cleaned the system to make sure power was running at least once per week. During the fall bull trout spawning season, we conducted three upstream red counts, two in September and one in October, at two week intervals apart. During the first two counts, we flagged in GPS reds to ensure they were noted and not double counted. We used teams of two and we switched red counters in the different counts to get the most accurate estimate. Through our study period, we counted a total of 16 upstream migrating bull trout and 10 moving downstream through the Rocky video reel. We enumerated 14 spawning reds, giving us a 1.14 spawner to red ratio. We found upstream migrating bull trout between 20 and 55 centimeters in length. The most frequent size class was 35 to 40 centimeters with five fish. We saw four fish between 30 and 35 centimeters and three fish between 45 and 50 centimeters migrate upstream. We observed upstream migrating bull trout swimming through the video weir slower compared to the downstream migrants. Seven upstream bull trout swam through the weir at 0.3 meters per second. We had one downstream bull trout swim through the weir at 1.3 meters per second. We observed bull trout swim downstream through the video weir head first as well as tail first. The majority of both upstream and downstream migrations occurred between 1800 hours or 6 p.m. and 2300 hours or 11 p.m. The second most frequent time of day for migration was between 1100 and 1500 or 3 p.m. We also saw a few fish migrate in the wee hours between 1 and 6 in the morning. These next two figures show bull trout counts on the left y-axis with positive going upstream and negative moving downstream. The x-axis is the continuous date from July 8th to October 14th that the video weir was running. This figure shows the relationship with the mean daily water temperature on the right y-axis. The majority of upstream migrants occurred in August with the peak happening from August 4th through August 7th when five bull trout moved upstream. It's hard to draw conclusions with these limited data, but the water temp peaked above 10 degrees C and just below 11 degrees C from July 27th to August 16th. The lowest mean daily water temperature occurred on October 12th at 2.65 degrees C. In this figure, discharge in cubic feet per second is on the right Y axis. Discharge of the Vaki video weir was largest on July 9th at 46.6 CFS and was lowest on October 11th at 11.9 CFS. The start of peak upstream migration on August 4th corresponded to 29.2 CFS. Downstream migration seemed to correspond with sharp and increases in discharge from rain events that occurred on September 9th, September 18th, and September 26th, but again, it's hard to draw conclusions with just the first year of data collection. We were happy with the performance of our system, the reliability and the power source to continuously run the system so the days were shorter into late October. We spent many days at the study site making sure everything ran smoothly and may be able to back off more next year. I don't think it will ever be a fully passive data collection. We will need to check the power and download data at least every few weeks. Next year, we plan to test the accuracy of the system. Understanding the fish per red estimate allows fisheries managers a more precise estimate of bull trout population. 
Red counts are the few tools we have to estimate bull trout populations. Fish per red estimate of 1.14 is lower compared to other bull trout estimates. In estimates from the Flathead Basin, Fraley and the late great Brad Shepard estimated 3.2 fish per red in the 1989 Northwest Science Journal. A U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimate from Cougar Creek in Washington estimated 4 fish per red. Both of these studies had limited temporal sampling. We plan to run the Vaki video weir through multiple spawning seasons to understand how variable the fish per red estimate is over time. Our length estimates are smaller than what we have observed in Hungry Horse Reservoir sampling of adult bull trout. We have never estimated Wounded Buck Creek specifically. Our body depth to length relationship was generated from a Lake Ponderay population, so we refine that estimate with more flathead specific sampling. As we collect more data over time, we will be better able to discern cues in bull trout migration timing and have a better handle on how temperature and discharge impact migration. I would like to thank all R1 Fisheries staff for helping install the system, the Hungry Horse Mitigation Crew for the many drives and hours spent at the field site, and the Forest Service for permitting the weir on forest land. I'd love to hear any feedback, comments, and questions. Thanks for listening.